So what's up guys, a new just tiny video on color grading to really squeeze a little bit out of your renders that you can't really squeeze out of Blender by default. So I got a very, very simple scene here that I took over here in Crete, Greece. It's linked below in case you're interested in the source files. After you rendered, just like this, we're gonna hit render. And it's finished. We're gonna hop over to Photoshop and it looks like this. One quick tip that is not necessary for color grading, but I'll show you anyways, most will know, but I'll show you anyways because I really like to do it a lot these days. You can just extend the image like this. So once finished, you can basically choose what looks best. Sometimes I re-render. This looks okay. And what I'll do next is just combine this. So this is not a color grading step, but I still think this is a good and necessary step to really get more out of your render. Very important step now is to convert this to a smart object. Otherwise the color grading will be applied and this will be annoying if you ever want to change it again. And actually I'll crop this down a little bit more and just like this, because this just looks like a better image to me, just like that. So this is what we're gonna work with. Um, we're gonna go to filter camera raw you probably know about it that's what i mostly use so you can lose use a uh, lightroom or yeah photoshop but it's the same settings sometimes i use auto it doesn't always work in this case it's okay we can go with that but i'll turn back shadow you can double click it and reset it yeah it's okay sometimes vibrance is too much yeah, I'll also clip this. So very, very basic settings, but now it's gonna get a bit nicer. So clarity, I think is very, very important. Not this strong, but if you just add a little clarity, I think it just looks better around maybe 15. Texture, you can bump up. Sometimes it looks good to bump it up. Sometimes it looks good to bump it down a little bit. And I will actually bump it down a little bit. So it's just a very subtle touch, but it just makes it look yeah, a little bit better. What I like to do, especially in the snowy environment, but also in all my renders pretty much, I push over to warm light just a tiny bit. So it's not this default blue, but it's kind of a taste question. You can also keep the blue, but I just like it when it's a bit more beige. So I'm gonna look if I can maybe even bump up the exposure, but careful here, maybe turn down highlights. Yeah, I'll go with something like this. So another thing I like to do is uh, over here in the hues and the colors, um, sometimes the greens in here, I sometimes like to just pull it down this way. So it's this color, I don't know what to call it, but less this greenish yellowish, I like this, yeah, beige brown color more. So when we go back, you see it's a lot of colors. You might like this also, it's really a question of taste. And I'm just quickly doing this for the video. Sometimes I need like an hour for tweaking colors. Um, so I'm just doing a quick one. But yeah, this looks okay. So another trick you can do is over here and linear gradient. I don't know if it will look good here, but it looks good in many renders. And it's just pulling down exposure on the sky a little bit. So there's, you see the sky is pretty flat and boring. And with, oops. With this, you can yeah just get a bit more fade into the sky. And now looking at this, there's also one thing I really like to do, um, and it's too bad it didn't crop the image because I didn't apply it, but it's yeah just classic vignetting. So right here, just a little bit of vignetting really adds a lot. Okay, another thing, I don't think it will look good here, but you can do this definitely. Uh, I'll just show you. Uh, so you can take a linear gradient and the sun is somewhere on the left, you can see by the shadow. So I like to pull a gradient from the sun roughly and I'll give it more warmth. So something like this, maybe too much, maybe like this. And then also back in the color grading, the other image you can pull down and make it blue again. So basically what you're doing is only adding warmth to one side of the image. So this can also really make it pop. So here everything's very flat and now you really got a lot of pop. This might be too much, um, but like I said, it's a lot of tweaking. Oh uh, yeah, let's apply it. And yeah, it looks like this. Um, so if you like it or not, it's a question of taste, but I definitely think this can really 
lift yourself away from the default rendering look. Let's disable it, look like this. Now it looks like this. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's really that much better. So sometimes you just need a lot of tweaking to fine tune this, but this is definitely the tools I use um, and yeah, you can use as well. And it's just a lot of practice, a lot of tweaking. I'm not the best at it, but yeah, I, that's how I do it. That's it for today. Just a quick tip. If you're interested in these source files, they're all linked below and see you next time.